Every country and every region of the world has its own unique set of myths and folklore. These myths often feature some quite disturbing creatures and monsters, and today we'll be taking a look at 10 of the most terrifying creatures from around the world. Our first creature is definitely one that has spiked in recent popularity since the release of the video game Until Dawn. It is of course the Wendigo. The Wendigo is a mythical creature that was believed to have originated from Native American mythology, particularly from Algonquin folklore, one of the biggest groups of Native American people. The creatures themselves were said to have been seen in the northern forests and the Great Lakes of both North America and Canada. It was a cannibalistic monster that would feed on anything from animals to humans. In some cases the Wendigo was thought to be an evil spirit that could possess human beings, causing them to become monstrous cannibals with an insatiable greed. For our next creature we travel to South Africa, deep in the Rikersveld Desert, where we encounter the Grootslang, a creature that many consider to be as old as the world itself. The Grootslang is an enormous serpentine elephant, it somewhat resembles a regular elephant, but it has a serpent tail, and it resides in a cave known as the Wonder Hole. Legend states that the gods who created the Groot Slang made a grave error. They gave it incredible strength, cunning, and intellect. Once the gods realized their mistake, they split the creature into two, creating the first elephants and snakes. Despite their best efforts, the original Groot Slang managed to escape, and will then go on to sire all of the resulting Groot Slang. The creature was said to have a particular liking for precious gems, particularly diamonds. Despite its cruel nature, it's believed its victims could plead for mercy if they presented the beast with enough precious gems to satisfy its never-ending greed. There is a story that follows the English businessman Peter Grayson, who in 1917 travelled to South Africa in search for treasure in the Rikersveld Desert. The businessman went missing when members of his groups were attacked and injured by lions. This prompted stories and legends that the Grootslang had killed him for attempting to steal its treasure. So we find ourselves in yet another desert, but this time it is the Gobi Desert as we take a look at the Mongolian Death Worm. The Gobi Desert is one of the harshest and most unforgiving places on the earth, with huge temperature swings, merciless winds, and of course acid spitting killer worms. The Mongolian Death Worm is believed to have been a 5 foot tall monster that not only spits fire and acid, but also electricity. Merely touching the worm is said to cause excruciating pain, and sometimes even death. The worm itself lives underground, and is said to hibernate for most of the year, except for June and July, preferring to emerge from the ground when it has rained and the ground is wet. The worm most commonly preys on camels, frequently laying its eggs inside of its victims' intestines. The Mongolian Prime Minister of 1922 described the worm as a giant sausage, as it has no legs or no hands and is red. The acid the worm spits can corrode pretty much anything, making it quite a predator from distance. However, up close, the worm is capable of releasing an electrical discharge, strong enough to instantly kill any animal, and even a fully grown human, making it one of the last things you'd want to see if you're stranded in the Gobi Desert. It would be extremely hard to complete this list without mentioning any creatures from Japan, so at number 4 we have the Jorogumo, the Spider Woman. The Jorogumo is a yokai that takes the form of a spider. Its name either translates to Entangling Burden, or Horse Spider, as it is capable of transforming itself into a beautiful woman, and luring men back to its lair, where it entangles them in its web until it's ready to devour them. The Jorogomo live by themselves and often make their nests in caves, forests, and even abandoned houses in cities. Their diet primarily consists of young handsome men, which they lure back to their home, trapping them in their silk thread, which is said to be so strong that even a grown man is incapable of escaping once entangled. The men are then injected with a venom, making them weaker day by day, until they are ready to feast on them. The Jorogomo are masterful deceivers, no one expects the beautiful girl next door to be a man-eating spider. For our next creature we travel to the locks of Scotland and the rivers of Ireland, where we find a shape-shifting water spirit known as the Kelpie. The Kelpie have been known to take the form of a human, but they most commonly appear as black horses that haunt lakes and rivers. They may at first appear as a tame pony, but this is nothing more than a clever ploy to attract children and passers-by. Once their unaware victims are on its back, the Kelpie's glue-like magical hide makes it so they can never dismount. With their passengers now unable to escape, the Kelpie then drags them down into the water, drowning them before eventually eating them. In their human form, the Kelpie have been known to materialise as beautiful young women, luring men to a watery grave. Sometimes they instead appear as a hairy human that hides in the river. If you ever happen to come across a horse by a lake or a river, then I suggest you think twice before approaching. Inuit mythology is something that we've yet to cover on the channel, but at number 6 we have the Kalupalik. The Kalupalik are human-like creatures that live in the sea. They are always mentioned as being female. They have long hair, green skin, long fingernails, and we can almost look at them as the Inuit version of a mermaid. The legend states that they wear the same pouch that the Inuit people use to carry their children. The Kalupalik however do not use this pouch to carry around their own children, 
but rather to carry around the children that they steal away, preferring to target children who disobey their parents and misbehave. Before the creature has been known to appear, they make a humming sound, which serves as an early warning. The children who do not heed this warning would then be placed in the creature's pouch and taken underwater, where they would live for eternity, never to see their parents again. It's likely that this story was used by parents to keep their children more behaved and close to them at all times. At number 7 we have the Aswang, a creature rooted in Filipino folklore. The Aswang is a shape-shifting monster that has been derived from a combination of a vampire, a ghoul and a witch. They can often be found living in towns and villages as a regular person. They are quiet and very shy. At night when the coast is clear, they transform into a variety of different creatures, ranging from a bat or a bird, to a black dog or a cat. They only really transform during the evening because that is when they are most hungry. They love to eat small children and unborn fetuses, with a particular taste for the heart and the liver. Some Aswang are even capable of sucking children straight out of the mother's womb while they sleep. The Aswang are most vulnerable during the daytime, as they lack the superhuman strength that they possess during their nighttime transformation. They can also be repelled with the use of garlic, salt, and religious artifacts such as a crucifix or holy water. Ancient Greece has some truly fantastic mythological creatures, and many of them are indeed quite terrifying, but the one I've chosen today is the Linnaean Hydra, a gigantic nine-headed water serpent that resides in the swamps of Lerna, rumoured to guard one of the entrances to the underworld. The Hydra makes this list not only because of its terrifying appearance, but because how difficult it was to slay. Each time one of its heads were chopped off, two new heads would take its place. The beast was eventually slain by the Greek hero Heracles. Whenever he cut off one of its heads, he would cauterize the wound with a torch, stopping anything from spawning from the stump. Eventually when he came across the last head, which was believed to be indestructible, he took a golden sword given to him by Athena, removed its head and then buried it deep underground, so the creature and its head could never be reunited. Egyptian mythology doesn't have an enormous selection of creatures or monsters, but the ones that did appear were extremely feared. Amit was known as the devourer of the dead, and would wait alongside Anubis as a person's heart was weighed against the feather of Mahat. If the heart weighed heavier than the feather, then Amit would devour their soul, forcing them to die a second time. Amit had the front hind of a lion, the lower half of a hippopotamus, and the head of a crocodile. In ancient Egypt, all three of these animals were considered man-eaters, and none were more feared by the Egyptian people. The tenth and last creature on today's list is the Skinwalker, a Native American myth that is common amongst the people of the Navajo region. The Skinwalkers were able to disguise themselves as animals, either through transformation or possession, and many considered them to be a type of witch. Animals that Skinwalkers would most commonly be seen as included foxes, wolves, eagles, and owls, but it's important to note that they preferred the form of a coyote, as they were often associated with witchcraft and trickery. A Skinwalker can possess an animal by looking into its eyes, and it's believed that that would often work for humans too, locking eyes and taking control of your actions. Once they possess or transform into an animal, they then possess all of that animal's qualities. They can smell and see things that regular humans could not, and they can cover vast amounts of terrain in short amounts of time. There are some legends that state, much like a werewolf, a skinwalker can be killed by calling them by their birth name. We've managed to cover a fair amount of creatures from varying regions today, and this video has been more of an introduction to each individual creature, rather than a full explanation. If there are any creatures in this video that you would like to see in their own video, or perhaps you would like to see more videos in a similar style to this one, then let me know in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.